Good morning, my friends. Today is the 28th Sunday in Ordinary, ordinary Time. It's day 31 of Be Formed. Uh, they switched my rooms here in San Giovanni Rotondo. Um, we're having some issues with the, the other room. Um, we have a great view here. Had, had an amazing day yesterday visiting um, the burial place, uh, seeing, you know, Padre Pio as if he were sleeping there. Went up to see the um, the place where St. Michael the Archangel had appeared to a bishop and some others. Uh, beautiful place looking out over the Adriatic Sea. You can see some of my short videos of where we've been on my YouTube channel. But let's look at the readings today because there, there's so much here. Uh, in the Gospel story from Mark 10, we have this famous story of the, the rich man who comes to Jesus. And it says he ran up and knelt down. So I'll tell you, this is a good man. He recognizes something really good in Jesus because he kneels down. Like, you only kneel down before somebody holy, uh, possibly, of God. And he says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So it's a, it's a good, healthy desire. He wants eternal life. And uh, Jesus says, why do you call me good? So some will use this as saying that Jesus is denying his divinity. Because he goes on to say, no one is good but God alone. We're going to see as he continues on, Jesus isn't denying his divinity, but he's, he's, he's asking a question. He wants us to answer the question ourselves. No one is good but God alone. So what he could be saying is, if I am God, then you can call me good. Um, and so let's continue and we'll come back to that point. So what Jesus tells him to do is not just believe in me as your personal Lord and Savior, even though we're going to hear faith is really important. But what does Jesus say? The first thing, you know the commandments, you shall not kill. And he's talking about the love of neighbor. So the first three commandments are about love of God. Next seven are love, love of neighbor. He quotes some from the love of neighbor. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, and, and honor your mother and father. So what you do is really important uh, for salvation. And the man replied, teacher, I've done all of these from my youth. And so this is a good man. He wants to do what's right. His desire is there. So Jesus looking at him, loved him. And so we, we hear in this, the love of the father for us, the father through Jesus for us, he loved him and said to him, you are lacking in one thing. So, you know, for a Jewish person to hear, okay, Jesus is saying, keep the commandments, the Decalogue. Now I want you to, I'm going to add something to the Ten Commandments, if you will. He's not saying that literally, but he's saying, you know, if you want eternal life, salvation, keep the commandments and, now I'm going to raise the bar, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. So he's saying, uh, detach yourself from the things of this world and then come follow me and so uh here's the commandments detach yourself and follow me at that statement the man's face fell he went away sad for he had many possessions what jesus is not saying is possessions are bad but our attachment to the possessions um, i know people who have a lot of things but they're not attached to them i know people who have very little and they're attached to what little they have. What he wants us to do is detach ourselves of these material things. You know, I'm going to say it again, four substitutes for God. You know them now. Honor, power, pleasure, and wealth, according to St. Thomas Aquinas. And so Jesus uses this. And by the way, by Jesus saying, come follow me, if, if he weren't good and if he weren't God, he wouldn't say, come follow me. Um, and so that goes back to the point, is Jesus denying his divinity by saying, you know, only God is good? He's saying basically the opposite. He's saying, I am God, and so come follow me because I, I am good. And he took this as an opportunity to teach his disciples about the importance of detachment, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Now at this time, and even to this day, 2021, some people see wealth as uh, as a sign of God's blessing, you know, people who are wealthy must be blessed. Uh, Jesus is not saying that. He's saying it's tough if you have wealth, if you're attached to wealth, 
you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. And so they were amazed. And so Jesus says to them, again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus uses exaggeration here, hyperbole. You know, like he says, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better to, for you to enter heaven, you know, without a hand than to enter Gehenna with all of your members. Here he's saying this camel, this big beast, to enter an eye of a needle seems impossible. St. Ambrose, um, I believe it was St. Augustine who quoted St. Ambrose, saying that there was a gate um, that was named the, the camel's gate and a camel could only enter through on its knees and you have to take off all of the bags to enter. Um, uh, I, I was reading something where they say that there's not any evidence right now that there was a camel's gate, but that Jesus is using hyperbole here. He's wanting to get our attention to say, sin is serious, attachment to material things is serious, and these things can prevent you from getting to heaven. And so they were exceedingly astonished and said, well, then who can be saved? And Jesus said, for human beings, it is impossible, but for God, all things are possible. So salvation always begins with God's grace. God takes the initiative. We have to respond in faith, follow the commandments, detach ourselves, and then follow Jesus. Um, and then I'll just comment briefly uh, about Peter says, we've given up everything and followed you. And Jesus says, amen, I say to you, there's no one who's given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mother and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. I remember when I was getting ready to get ordained and I had this conversation with God, like, God, I've given up everything. What's in it for me? And all I heard God say was, trust me. And I can tell you in the last almost 20 years of being a priest, of detaching myself of the material things, of my plans, and placing God first, it's not easy and I'm not perfect by any means, but the joy has gone through the roof. And so Jesus invites us to, you know, uh, what does Padre Pio say as I'm in his, uh, his homeland here? prayed, don't worry. Um, yeah, I always mess up that quote. So you can, you can type in the comments, pray, hope, and don't worry. I believe is that that's what he said. So let us trust in God. Let us detach ourselves. Let us follow his commandments and follow Jesus with our whole heart, mind, and soul. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your son, Jesus, for the commandments we thank you for the material things that we have and for the things that we don't have. Help us to just detach ourselves of these things and just to make you, Lord, the center of our lives. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday. Uh, we're going to be heading today to Assisi for the next two days. Can't wait. We're going to be stopping by Loreto and Lanciano, uh, the famous Eucharistic miracle. So, Please pray for us and count on my prayers for you. God bless.